When Yusuf Nurkic suffered his leg fracture, it certainly looked as if the Trailblazers' season could be in jeopardy. But since that time, Ennis Kanter has stepped in to play really well for the Trailblazers, but now is dealing with some injury concerns of his own. Welcome back, everybody. For those new, my name is Brian, and I'm a doctor and a sports fan, and it's my goal on this page to combine those two interests to help explain different sports injuries and sports medicine topics in a way you guys can better understand and learn from. Today, we're going to focus on Ennis Kanter and his separated shoulder. As usual, we'll take a look at the relevant anatomy for shoulder separation. We'll take a look at the footage of the various contact and hits in which he's aggravated the shoulder, and then we'll talk about what it means going forward with the rest of the playoffs. If you guys like this type of content and want to stay up to date, make sure you hit that subscribe button and let's get started. Right off the bat, a separated shoulder doesn't involve the actual bigger classic joint we think of in the shoulder with the head of the humerus or the arm bone. It involves the AC joint. Looking at our anatomy, the key structures to point out, first off, we have the clavicle or the collarbone. Next, of course, is the humerus or the arm bone that comes up to form the humeral head. And then we have the scapula. The glenoid is the component of the scapula in which that humeral head rotates about. And then also important on the scapula is the acromion. That's that kind of top bump that you can feel at the top of the scapula. So the key joints in the shoulder here are the sternoclavicular joint at the clavicle and the sternum. The AC joint, or the acromioclavicular joint, which is kind of the bump that you can feel at the top of your shoulder, and then the glenohumeral joint. A separated shoulder involves this AC joint. If we zoom in closer on the AC joint, we can see that it's made up of a number of different ligaments that are all named after the two structures they connect. Between the acromion and the clavicle, we have the acromioclavicular ligaments. Then there's the coracoclavicular ligaments running between the coracoid process and the clavicle. And then the coracoacromial ligament running from the acromion to the coracoid process. So when you hear someone has a shoulder separation, it involves this complex of ligaments around the AC joint, not the actual glenohumeral joint. Let's take a look at the footage next to try and explain how Cantor might have injured the shoulder. AC joints typically get injured from a direct blow to the side of the shoulder whenever the arm is adducted or in at the side. Oftentimes this happens when someone lands on the shoulder or whenever they get hit in the shoulder, kind of pushing it into the body. If we look at a top view of the AC joint, imagine a big load coming in as if you're falling on that shoulder, and that can cause that stress in that AC ligament complex. Now Cantor first injured this back in game five against the Oklahoma City Thunder on this play. He's backing down against George and there's a moment where you can see that shoulder kind of get an axial load or get pushed into him and then he's clearly in some pain after this. He went out of the game for a bit and then came back into the second quarter and then of course there was this play against Steven Adams where he kind of looked like he got knocked to the ground and while he didn't actually land on the shoulder or take a direct hit to it, he did kind of have his arms extended behind him and when he landed, certainly probably put some more load on that AC joint. We heard after the game that at halftime, Canner had an injection into the AC joint, and since that time has actually been able to play in the rest of the games against the Nuggets. Now, unfortunately, in game three, there were a couple of other occasions where he seemed to aggravate it even more. There was this play in the first quarter where he's falling out of bounds, trying to get a rebound, and while nothing got hit or aggravated, there is kind of this quick motion where he tries to quickly move that arm up, and you can see really aggravates that shoulder. Then again, in the first overtime, we see him aggravate that shoulder again. Here, it looked like like it was the same sort of thing. It was a really quick kind of upward motion that seemed to catch him off guard and provoke more pain. Then of course there was the play where he's on the foul line and Nikola Jokic seems to kind of throw an elbow at him and knock that shoulder backwards probably hurting it even more. Now his status is uncertain for the rest of the series, so let's break down the types of AC ligament injuries and try to explain what it could mean for him going forward. A typical ligament injury is graded one through three, one being mild, three being a complete tear of the ligament. The AC joint is graded differently. There's this Rockwood classification where there's types one through six, type one being the most mild and type six being the most severe type of AC injury. Type one is the most mild where this ligament, the AC ligament, is sprained, but nothing's actually torn. In a type two, the AC ligament is injured and torn, but the coracoclavicular, the CC ligament, is still intact. In a type three, both of these ligaments are torn. And so you can imagine how that would cause more instability and pain if both of these anchor points or both of these ligaments are damaged. Type four, five, and six have to do with how much the clavicle is displaced because of those tears. Type four through six are much more severe, usually as the result of some high energy, high impact trauma, and those require surgery to fix because of all the other complications that can happen. The consensus is type one and type two don't require surgery to fix. In a type one, you're often limited to returning to play just based on pain. Most people get back within three days to a couple of weeks, but it's really pain that it determines how much you can get back and play. A type two is worse, and so on a type two, you actually do have tearing of that ligament, and the recommendation for these is that you're in a sling for a period of time, keeping that arm immobilized. You can get back to sport once your strength and your range of motion have completely returned, and that usually takes two to four weeks. A type three then is even worse, and those people are usually out more on the order of a couple of months. As we progress through these types, you have more ligaments that are torn, and so it's gonna take longer to 
recover. Let's talk next about the implication of this with Canner, both in terms of his game, how much pain he's gonna be in, and then if he could potentially make it worse. Now, right off the bat, yes, playing with an AC injury that's not properly healed does put you at risk of it progressing to a worsening type and becoming worse. We don't actually know which type he has. We don't know if any of these ligaments are actually torn or if they're just sprained like a type one, but the risk is certainly there of making it worse or causing additional injury if it's not properly healed. I can guarantee the medical staff are gonna be paying really close attention to how this is progressing because they're not gonna subject him to a risk of really seriously injuring his shoulder and needing to require surgery. But with every game, with every hit, with every aggravation of this, there is a chance that it could progress. Whenever you have a type two where that AC ligament is ruptured, you put a lot more load on your coracoclavicular ligament and that's what makes that one susceptible to tearing. These ligaments are all working together to stabilize the shoulder in different directions so if you disrupt one of those ligaments, you load another ligament and make that one at risk of injury. If you have the AC joint ligament that's torn and then you rupture your CC ligament, now suddenly it's a type three that's talking months of recovery. And then if it's unstable, you can make it even worse and definitely require surgery. But assuming this is a more mild type one type of thing where nothing's actually torn, this is definitely painful for him to play with. Any sort of motion where you're bringing that arm up really quick or you're getting your shoulder knocked backward as trying to come off a screen or getting hit with a screen is all putting stress and pressure on that AC joint, especially for a big man who's got his arms extended behind him trying to block out and then trying to extend up really quick. All of those quick, sudden movements are gonna be causing additional pain to him. He's wearing padding to try to prevent additional direct contact to it, but the fact that he's now had multiples of these injuries, it'll be interesting to watch and see what progresses and if they do give him some additional time off to let that properly heal. And you know, the play they're talking about here with Jokic where they're both on the free throw lane going in for a rebound, yeah, that certainly is gonna cause some additional pain and put that AC joint at further damage risk. And while you could certainly argue that this is kind of a cheap shot to do to someone who's injured, there's gonna be a lot of similar plays like this that are just a natural part of the game. They're gonna put Canner at further risk of getting hurt. So hopefully for him, this is just a mild type one thing that really is just a question of trying to deal with the pain. They'll pay close attention. They'll make sure this doesn't continue to progress to a type two or a type three, because that will certainly require more period of immobilization, keeping him out of the playoffs. That's it though. Thanks for watching the video as always, guys. Hope you all learned something more about anatomy, about shoulder separations. Leave any questions, comments below. Let me know ideas for future videos. And until next time, thanks for watching as always, and we'll see you later. Bye.